Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of Raven's Reviews. This time we're doing a book review on one of the latest books to come out about British infantry rifles. As you can see, it's called Conquest of Empire, Defense of Realm. It really does a great job covering British infantry small arms and uh, their role, not only their role, but their story on adoption. That's where this book shines. It's by John Hutchins. He's a former British Army officer. It has tons of great pictures. Really great, high quality pictures. And of course, my copy signed. Let's get to the table of contents here so y'all can pause and check it out if need be. There you go. All right. So why write another book on British small arms? Seems like it's all been done before. Well, like he said, it's been a long time since anything new has been published, and in that time, a lot of new information has come to light, and a lot of old information has been debunked. So, let's get right into it. Let's get past the introduction here and go to my little bookmarks. It starts off with a flint lock rifle. Something that I'm personally not too familiar with. I don't have any, and I've only skimmed over this chapter. Here's some of those great pictures I was telling you about. These pictures help me all the time. I take pictures and post in the group for references all the time. Now let's get to... There's some lock plates, and it has a great description on each of them. All right, let's get to something here. This is my most used chapter, obviously. Martini Henry, and it starts out here, because, of course, this last chapter is from the Snyders, and it starts out here with the adoption of the Martini Henry Pretty much everything you can need to know about it, including the wars and why it was uh, important to get a cartridge rifle designed from the ground up to be a cartridge rifle. Uh, it really does a great job. And like I said, here's some more of those great pictures. The adoption of the 303 round, which is where a lot of us start. A lot of us start at 303 rifles, uh, SMLEs in particular, and number fours. Some more of those great pictures. We'll go to one of my favorite chapters. It's not very long. On uh, pattern 1913 and 1914, as y'all know, I'm a big 1914 fan. Nice little bookmark my wife made. This... Besides the story on how and why it was adopted and all the background behind that, this is a great reference. Here, you get to go through, you get to go through the beginnings, the marks, a little description about them. Then you get to go through all their various different incarnations and what they became, how they were marked, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 2 stars, and what that all means. This is really the best reference part in the book. It's quick, it's fast, you can find it, you can tell what should be there and what shouldn't be there if people have changed some things on it. Uh, this is, It's really great. I can't really say enough great things about this book to be honest with y'all. Here's some more of those great pictures that I was talking about. Goes all the way to the SLR. The uh, L85A1, or small arms of the 1980s, which uh, we all know how we feel about that. It even has a short chapter on the future and what possibly the future might hold. Some more great pictures. 
suggested reading list, which is great. So, if you need a book on British Rifle Small Arms, one that not only has uh, reference material, quick and easy to get to, but it has a great story on how all these rifles were adopted in sequence and why they built on each other and uh, what happened and just all the background story you could ever want, I highly suggest this book. I will put Lick links in the description to where you can buy it and uh, links to my Facebook pages and groups on firearms and uh, hopefully y'all this can uh, be a great reference to y'all as it has been to me as always thanks for watching cheers